Hello gems, this is episode 4 of 4 in the Make an Easy Live 2D VTuber model in one week series. Let's do a quick overview to recap on what we learned in episode 3. In the last episode, we learned how to create a texture atlas, learned how to rig the eyes, eyebrows, and a mouth. And finally, we added some expressions. We were going to learn about the animator this episode, but after some trial and error, I figured a better way to do this would be in VTube Studio. Working on models is all about learning, and sometimes what you plan may not work out the way you expect. This is okay because this is a part of the growing and learning experience. In this case, we can learn more about animating in another video. Let's first fix up a few pieces in Live 2D Cubism, and then we can move over to VTube Studio. Let's fix our sparkle eyes. So upon Upon diving into VTube Studio, I found that the eyes were interfering with each other. If we have just a simple on and off switch for the sparkle eyes, this will solve the problem. So basically what we're going to do is we can just right click, delete this off iris, click yes, and we're just going to use sparkle eyes, but instead of having it turn completely off and on, we're going to click on the sparkle eye and to the left the sparkle eyes will be on and to the right the regular eyes will be on. So let's go ahead and right click, drop a point for the sparkle eye and turn that to 100 opacity and we'll do the same for the other one. So let's click on there, right click, plus turn that to 100% opacity. Perfect. And then to the right, we'll click this minus button on both of the sparkle eyes so we can erase them. And now we'll slide all the way to the right and go back to the regular irises. Click plus, turn that to 100%, go to the right one, right click plus, add this to 100. And then we also want to grab our eye highlights, of course. So let's go ahead and select that and do the same exact thing. Plus, click OK, turn that to 100. If you're running into this weird in-between state where the eyes are kind of showing weirdly, what we can do is snap to the right and click on our regular irises, add points to that side as well, and then make sure that's at zero. And we'll do the same for this one. We have the point added already, that's at zero, great. So now you can see it has that smoother transition and we want to do the same to the right side for the sparkle eyes. So let's go ahead and right click, drop a point, make sure that's at 100, make sure that's at zero. Same for the other one, we will right click, drop the point and turn that to zero. So then it has the nice smooth shift between the two. And make sure to set your default to negative one. So for fixing the rest of the sparkle eyes, what we need to do is if you see when we're over to the right side with the regular eyes turned on, and we move the eyes around, everything looks good. But if we snap to the left and move things around, the opacity is shifting in and out. So we'll need to fix that. We'll click this link button here, and we're just gonna make sure that we rig the sparkle eyes to be the same as the regular eyes. So we're just gonna go through each each point and fix them to make sure these regular eyes are not showing and that the sparkle eyes are. So we're gonna go ahead and speed up the video a bit at this part and you can go ahead and slow it down if you'd like to follow along. Okay, and now we can re-rig them. So let's start with eyeball X and we'll select both sparkle eyes, hold down control to select both at once, snap to the right and drag them over, then snap to the left, drag them to the left, and then those work good. Snap back to the middle and then for Y, snap to the right, hold shift, go up, and then back to the left, hold shift, go down. So now we have both of those, and then we'll go ahead and link them and click the burger menu, synthesize corners, click OK. Now those should be good to go. Now if we go back to these ones, you can see it's all the regular iris and if we snap back to the left it's all this iris. There is one more part that we do have to fix which is the eye opening and closing as well. So let's focus on that next. Make sure your sparkle eyes are turned on again and we can see that they both are working to the far right here but they start to disappear and get a little bit messed up down the line. So let's just go through and fix that. So right here we can see that this eye needs to be turned off and then we'll turn both of the sparkle eyes 
back on at 100%. And then let's snap both to these two and put 100 for both of them, the sparkle eyes, and then go back to the main iris and make sure both of those are off. I saw this one was on, so we'll turn that to 100. And then here, we'll make sure they're on as well at that next point. It looks like this one's missing a point, so we'll just go ahead and click that. Make sure the regular iris is at zero. And the sparkle one is at 100, so those are both on, and then we'll snap to the final. Okay, and then you can see that those are working. Now that should be all good for your sparkle eye expression. Next, let's turn off the mouth angry close layer, and then the mouth sad close layer. With the technique we're gonna be using, we won't need them. Something I learned in this process was that there can be only one mouth Y parameter in VTube Studio, making it quite challenging to set up multiple versions of an open mouth and a closed mouth. The good news is, you can still make great use of them by creating an angry two or a sad two if you want to have variations of your emotes. You can still use all the techniques we've been using in this series to achieve this look. Create a parameter called mouth off. Select the closed mouth and drop two green keyframes. If things are dimmed out like this and you can't change them, it's probably because one of your other parameters aren't set to a value. So you can see that breath isn't selected on either side. So if I just go ahead and snap over here to the left side, now we can see that this is no longer dimmed out. So if you're running into that problem, definitely check to make sure that all your parameters are resting on one of the parameters that isn't something that's kind of floating in between. Snap to the left and turn the draw order to 499. Make sure the default is at 1. We also want to make sure that the angry symbol is hidden. Let's do this by right click editing the angry parameter and setting the minimum to 0 and the default to 0. Refill your already existing frames like I'm doing here and add a new one at 0, making sure the draw order is 499 and that all the angry angry expressions are off. So basically we just want the everything off for angry and at 499 draw order to the left. And then once we go back to the right, it's at 500 and all the angry pieces are on. And same for this point here, we want angry to be at 500 and fully on. Chapter 13, exporting your model. Before exporting, make sure to right click edit sparkle eyes and change the default to one. Click OK, and let's export. Go to File, Export for Runtime, Export MOC3 File. Click OK and save it into the folder under your desktop for now. It will take a while to export, so let it do its thing. Now is the perfect time to grab some boba tea, or whatever beverage you like drinking. You'll need to have VTube Studio for this next step. Let's download VTube Studio off of Steam. Launch VTube Studio, and let's start setting up your model to be used. Chapter 14, VTube Studio Setup. When VTube Studio launches, if this menu is not already up, double-click any space in the program click the person icon and click import your model. Click open folder and this will send you to the location you need to put your model in. Now go copy that folder you saved earlier on your desktop with your model in it and paste it into this folder. Click the person again to hide the menu and then bring it back up. You may have to do this a few times to give your model a chance to load. Once you load your model, click auto setup, click OK and your model setup and next we'll work on the expressions. For the angry expression, you'll click the settings icon and go over to this video icon with the play button, open the expression editor and click create new expression. Name it angry and scroll to the bottom of your parameters. Turn on angry and slide it to one. Turn on mouth open and slide that to zero. Now go up to your brow art angle and turn it to negative one and the same for the left one. This way you'll get a more angry look. Make sure to click save. For the sad expression, we'll go into the expressions editor, create a new expression and name it sad. Scroll to the bottom and turn sad on to one and turn on mouth open. Make sure it is on zero. Turn on mouth off and turn it to negative one. Go up to brow angles and turn both of them on and slide them to one. Click save. Now for the sparkle eyes, we'll scroll to the bottom and turn on sparkle eyes. Slide it to the right and click save. Now for the setup, you can cancel out of that and click the plus button. Add a hotkey action, set slash unset expression, select that and then click expression and select angry. Now you can assign it to a hotkey. Select key one and assign it to the hotkey you want to use. I'll be using one. We can test it out. Click one to turn off the expression and go back to normal. Scroll down and add another expression. Do the same thing we just did, but select sad and choose a different hotkey. I'll be using two. Now try it out. Remember to click the same key as that expression to turn it off. Create one more expression and name it. And I'll turn this one to hotkey three. I'm also going to turn all my fades to 0.1 seconds. You can experiment with this depending on the look you want. There are additional settings here like stop when the key is let go. And if you prefer holding the key while that expression is active, you can even have it stop after a certain time passes. Congratulations, your model is set up. And now let's prepare your model for streaming. Chapter 15, OBS setup. Let's set up OBS, a free streaming program. 
First, we'll download it. And once you have it downloaded, go ahead and launch it. In the scene section, create a new scene by clicking the plus button. And then you can click plus in the sources and select game capture. Choose a specific window and select VTube Studio. Go back to VTube Studio. If you want to use a background, you can use one by Xing out of this menu that we're in. Double click the blank space and go to the backgrounds icon. Try out the different backgrounds here. If you want to have your model be transparent in OBS and overlay something like this on your desktop or the game you're playing, scroll down to the color picker and select a green screen color. You may have to choose another color if your model has a lot of green in it. Next, go back to OBS and right click your game capture and sources, go to filters, click plus. Add a chroma key. If yours is green, adjust the bars here till it looks right. If you need another color, try custom color and use the same color code that you use in VTube Studio in OBS. You can resize your model here. The free version of VTube Studio has the watermark, but if you'd like to get rid of it, you can buy the watermark remover DLC. For actually streaming, I'll show you how to set up your stream for Twitch specifically. Open your settings in OBS, go to stream and click connect account recommended and log in. Click apply and you should be good to go. You can click start streaming to go live. Speaking of buying, I want to keep my promise I told you earlier in the series about the advantages of buying live 2D long term. Several artists and creators are finding ways to pave their art career by rigging models in live 2D. There are streamers out there who want to try VTubing who don't have rigging skills and have no interest in learning them, but will happily support artists and commission them to do the work. Live 2D is a fantastic way to monetize yourself and to build a portfolio for your long-term art career. Here's a member in the community who mentioned that they found my tutorials a couple years ago and now is rigging full-time professionally for the last three to four years. This is incredible to see and makes me eager to continue to support you gems in your journey to continue learning Live 2D, no matter your skill level. Stay tuned for a bonus episode in this series about how to sell pre-made models online. This could be a great way to potentially start a small business and give yourself a shot at making money with Live 2D. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication, but it is possible. And share the series with a friend if you think they'd enjoy it. In the meantime, while you continue to get better at content creation, check out my episode on the 10 do's and don'ts in content creation.